think it was a couple years ago now that I did a video called Carve a Little Man Start to Finish. And he was just a little teeny tiny guy. I don't know where he is right now. But uh, very straightforward, very simple. And I think today I thought, why don't we just do a little uh, kind of an upgrade on that, uh, that little man video and do a bigger little man. And this guy is uh, four inches tall, probably an inch and a half square uh, piece of basswood. Now, the difference in this video is is we're not going to have the same same looking man. I just want to set you up and show you that how we're going to do things. We're going to do it uh, as we go. So we're just going to whittle away a little man and come what may at the end and hopefully give you the confidence just to go off on your own and uh, attack a, a piece of wood and make your own man. So that's what we're going to do. So four inches tall, inch and a half square, and that's about all the dimensions I'm going to give you, other than a, a finger here or a finger there or whatever, hat, mustache, ear, who knows what's going to come. So we're just going to whittle into this uh, piece of wood and uh, find our little man. I'm going to also just use my uh, knife on this whole project. And my knife is an inch and three quarter Helvi uh, uh, rough out knife, actually. So as you can see, it lights a little bit lower. And uh, I'm trying to uh, play with a couple ideas with the lighting and see if I can get rid of that washed out look all the time and uh, just really focus on the, the work at hand. First things first, as we do, we uh, find our, our center line on our work and we're just going to put that center line all around the carving. Always check once in a while to make sure it's good. That's just rough. doesn't have to be exactly perfect. But just gives you a little little guide to go by. We'll do the same thing on the top. And what the heck, let's do this to the bottom just in case. All right. So we got some marks all around our piece of wood. And I think we'll just start with uh, the feet. We know our feet four inches. We probably want something about a, a five eighths, five eighths uh, for the feet. And uh, if we want to do that in metric, that's about three quarters of a finger <laughs> all right so wait that's our feet and then let's just say uh, our head we'll go with uh, you know our head is you know two and a half two 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 chunky fingers <laughs> and that's how we're gonna do this whole carving all right but to be fair let's say that that's an inch and a half on the front. Now if that's the front I want a good angle on the chin so I'm gonna come up so probably maybe an inch and a quarter on the back side right? and then I'm just gonna take those lines and you can see the uh, little angle that we like to have All right, like so. Right off the bat just gonna Get these feet marked where they go. If you're new to this whole uh, idea of uh, carving, I have a whole series of getting started with carving. Safety tips, how to cut, you name it, types of wood, tools. So I'm starting off with my knife freshly stropped. So she's good and sharp. I'm not wearing my glove, but uh, especially for the beginners, it's a great idea to get the carving glove because when you cut yourself with these sharp carving knives, you really do cut yourself. There's our feet just kind of marked off. We're going to do the same thing on the head. It's kind of going each way, block it off. I did a video this week on, uh, I carved a gnome out of a pine 4x4, four four, and then I ended up doing two versions of the video. One was uh, fun and fast and slow and silent. And I said, which do you prefer? And they said, long and with you talking. So perhaps this video will make you eat your words. Because it's going to be long and I'm going to flap my gums the whole time. <laughs> Alright. So. 
I just think this would be a nice little uh, upgrade video to our carve a little man one. We'll carve a bigger little man. And show a few new little tips and tricks, hopefully along the way. Just blocking out the head here. Okay, so right here we've got our feet established. We've got our head just kind of roughly blocked off, blocked in. What I like to do too, if I got my center mark there, just take a little nick out of the front and back, even though we're going to probably end up cutting it out. But uh, you can't erase a cut. A cut is uh, better seen than a piece of than a pencil line. All right, so. Next. Next thing we're going to do is, you can see we've probably uh, cut in about a quarter inch on the uh, neckline, but we're going to take that quarter inch I'm going to run that all the way around. We're actually going to remove that on all sides actually. So what you see is a little bit different is that the back of the head is not in line with the spine. We're going to bring that head in a little bit on the shoulders and we're going to thin the head down on the sides. Okay, And then we're going to actually, after we thin that down, we'll just knock that little cut back in again. You'll see. But Everybody has a way to do things, so if you want to do it different than me, you go right ahead. The only goal to this video is to show you uh, a few different uh, techniques and uh, hopefully give you the confidence to just grab a piece of wood and have at it without somebody really holding your hand the whole time and giving you exact measurements. I am not artsy at all. I can't hardly draw a stick man. So the knife is my tool to find what I'm looking for. Not that I always find it, <laughs> but that is my uh, is my my pencil and paper. It's my knife and my wood. So all right, there's two sides. And we're gonna bring the back in now too. I'm trying to take off too much at a time for video's sake, but take your time, take little bites. There we go. This was a little denser than I'm used to, but it's good. Okay, there's our three sides trimmed out. That's our, our block head. And now, I kind of want to do the same thing on the feet. So let's just establish the uh, bottom of our butt. You know, he's roughly about an inch, an inch above the bottom. So let's go right around that inch, inch and a hair, you know, big finger. And all I'm going to do here is I want to narrow the feet down, or narrow down to the feet, I should say. Same thing, just from the where the butt line is, just to give uh, a little bit of a slope to the uh, the legs. We don't know what kind of a shirt or coat we're going to have on, but we do know that the legs are thinner than the whole the torso and the body, right? So. That's about all we're going to do with that. Right, 
can see how that just 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 kind of pulls the bottom down a bit okay I am gonna go ahead with that butt line here and I'm gonna make that line in the center let's do a little V cut across there We're going to fine-tune that after as well. But if I get that butt marked in there, see how I took that out? Same thing on the bottom. That's why I said we're probably going to lose that line, so good thing we marked it up. But I'm going to take that off as well. Make the butt stand out from the back side here. See how we've got a little, little indent for the butt? All right. Before we uh, start rounding the head off too much, I want to take that center line and I want to get that back up on the head here, really on uh, both sides. And you just take a, I'm going to put a little mark across there, half an inch down. And then give it about a half an inch like so. And that's not necessarily the ears that we're going to use. But I now know that no matter what I do, rounding this all off, at least I know those are the exact same spot. And I can use that for a gauge, whether that be higher or lower. I have something there. But right now I'm going to put, dig that head back in there. Really biting in, getting the head, giving it a little bit of a neck even. Not that we're gonna see much of a neck. But just wanna get that head re-separated. Re I don't think we say re-separated. Bring that uh, down, give it a bit of a chin. Yeah, let's start taking all these uh, corners off. I guess it would be at this time that we better decide what we want to do. If we want to, uh, we could give him a hat. Give him a bit of a ball cap even. You want to do that? Okay, let's do that. So there's our, our ear, and like I said, I don't care about the ear, but it's good to have that marking there so that I don't uh, lose any of these lines. So if that was a, a ball cap across the back. There was a uh, conversation, I don't know how I caught it, was it? Maybe it was the International Carvers Association, but Gene Messer was saying that he would refer to himself as a uh, a whittler over a wood carver, and I thought about that for a little bit, trying to figure out what he was what he was meaning by that. And I think by that he means, as far as a, a whittler goes, he just likes to to remove remove wood. 
without uh, a great plan in place. Just going at the, uh, the carving. Not really artistic. I, that's not the right word. Not artistic. I meant realism is out the door. And just having fun with it. So if that were the case, then uh, I would take that claim as well. I'd like to be a whittler over a carver. I like uh, I like just digging in. Just kind of setting the uh, a visor for the ball cap here. I always like to do the top at least roughly first before I make a thin a thin edge on the on the visor because then it's uh, very very prone easy to uh, snap it off. We haven't even set in the sides yet, so let's let's do that. Right. Let's go around the whole little thing. Set that cap in place. that and now we've got our that's gonna come across here we'll make that visor a little heavy at first and then we'll we'll dig in round it out after Gonna be a super, super high cap here. Yeah, a smaller cap. And we don't want any of these sharp points either. So, but that's the cap. I wanted to. Uh, Get on the same same angle as the sides, but with a little bit of rounding to it. Real light, light short cap. I think that's good enough for now. We know where it is. We'll fine tune it after. Okay. set in the arms too before we get too carried away. So all we got for arms are center lines right now, okay? But I'm going to take these uh, corners off the front here. I'm going to do the exact same uh, plane on both sides here. And that just removes a little bit of a little bit of that wood that makes it hard to draw the arms on. We're definitely going to put the arms in the pockets, in their pockets is, but now at least we know where our pockets can be. And I'm just going to draw them like that, and that way there's no confusion. Okay, but there's our center line. So if I put one arm, one line, just in front, and I'll do one back here, all right? And then I'm just going to come across. You see the little angle in the butt? Again, it doesn't really matter, but that's going to be my angle. All right. 
it's rough, but that's the idea. So, in here. A little bit in front of the center line. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to take the back corners off of here. Almost to the arm line itself. Basically, it's the elbow, is what it is. Right. Mark the uh, elbows. And then here is the fun little corner here. All right. And that's the one where we're going to stick our knife in there. We'll do a couple passes first. That way, the deeper we can knock that chunk out, the better. So that we're not going back and keep cutting and cutting and cutting and making all these little little nasty little lines in there. So I can pop out a fairly good chunk at one go. It's going to save us a lot of ugly little marks. Alright. We overcut into. There's that. Same thing on this side. Okay, that's rough, but it's kind of where we're going to be. So now we're just going to make them uh, make sure that they're lined up perfectly. Okay, and they are. So now let's just go right at this. We've got, you can see, we've got major proud chest here, big blocky arms. So we're just going to taper this all back. Just go at it. Get that chest way down. We're gonna drop the shoulders down. You see how rough and dirty that cut is right here? Right? Now watch this. I'm gonna go right across that. And I'm gonna actually lose half of that that cut. See that? Get these shoulders down. Give them more of a slouch. Always going back and looking, make sure that you got everything square. Really undercutting that that chin. Get that chin sticking right out there. All right. Okay. Now on the back side, you can see. I'm going to take this and I'm going to make a big cut on the back right to where that comes in. All right. Bring that around. And I heard it pop but it didn't come out. So there. See that? Big chunky cut out of there. Same thing here. I'm gonna come around. Remove 
these back. See the shoulder blades? And the same thing. We're going to round that all around. Get the head forward a bit. Like this. Round and around. I like to have the uh, the back of the arms or the elbows behind the back part. So the back is going to be lower than the, the arms on the back. Does that make sense? I think so. All right. Now the the butt here. Well, we've got these. Uh, while we're working on the elbows. We put in that uh, that square line on the for the butt. Now we're going to bring that up into the elbow. And that just sets in place a nice little round tushy here. That's not going to be how it's going to end up, but you can see how we needed that elbow to bring it up into. All right. Now, we're not done with our arms yet, so we've got these uh, rough lines, so I really want to get that rounded a little bit, but by doing that, see that's a very flat cut, let's open up that cut, make it wider, come down here, join that other cut, have more of an open that it's a lot nicer cut same on this side come down down this way I'm gonna remove a little bit more of this wood across here there so now we can just bring our knife around here like I said, if we haven't decided on the shirt or the uh, coat or whatever yet, but regardless, we've got too much wood in the front here. And same here, let's take, uh, we know we got our pocket lines in here, but we still want to come down, bring that corner of the foot across, even before we talk about pants or anything. You see that? Okay. So the arms are looking pretty good. So if we want to set in our pockets, I think we can do that right now. And we'll just come across. Like so. that cut and then I'm going to come into that with this one clean out that little corner clean with this one and again what I like to always do is just give a little little chip in the corner of the pocket just to give some depth okay if I can see that I'll stick my knife in here stick it in here and pop a little chip out of there. It gives a little shadow. Alright. Do the same thing on this side. Nothing different. these corners off of here. Watch this corner here. I'm going to take this corner up. 
that, and then this one down again. We're just making those arms softer, not so rigid. All right, and then we can put a little deep cut in here. You can actually do a couple if you want to do a little wrinkle, corner wrinkle. What do I do on the other side? This way. Okay. Don't like this little straight line. So I'm just gonna just kind of scoop, scoop. Bring that up. Now on the inside here, I'm just gonna do a little extra. Okay, see how that's a pretty flat no shadow inside of the arm. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a real fine, fine cut. And if you learn nothing else from me in your life, take this little tip because I love this little thing. It's not much at all, but I think it really makes everyone's carvings kind of takes it up a notch and it's nothing to do, but you can see you can create that shadow in there and this side has nothing but this one has that nice deep little shadow not only does it give you a nice shadow it gives you a nice on other areas it gives you a nice little paint line too so I'm gonna do that on this side and I'm just cutting in fairly deep but the wood that I'm removing is like oh well, it's just a not even a millimeter of depth but it just creates that little that's the sliver but it just gives that little extra and that is not just on the arms that's going to be for everywhere hats arms legs feet everything if you can do that that will make your carving that much better and it's not much not much effort at all Okay, now pockets, when we get our feet out of the way, we want a little bit of a throw on my knife here because I do want the appearance that the pockets are full of hands. So if we can create a little, a little, uh, what do you want to call it, a little bulge in the pockets, then uh, that will really help out. We give that look that there's something in there. Okay. All right. What do we want to do now? Let's do the uh, the back of the legs here. I'm gonna take these corners off of here. I'm gonna do a, a large. Well, let's separate. Okay. Let's take that center line. Let's get these legs separated, and then we're going to put a little kink in the back of the uh, the back of the knee. So I'm just going to take my knife, run her down, pop that chip out. Now we got our legs. Way up there and separated. Now I'm going to put a big, big, see that? just a little kick in the back of the leg. Right. Try not to uh, maybe start with a small V so you don't get some big splinters off. Basically, we got to redo that center, but now we're doing a different, different planes here. Right. One 
almost making a bit of a diamond right in the center of the knees here. I'll show you. quite a hole but a little little diamond cuts in the middle but all right now same thing I'm gonna carry that same cut just around the, the side a little bit too all right. just to kind of get the side leg up under the arm Time you see a little dirty cut too, just give it another another little cut and nice and clean. I mean, saves a lot of work coming back. But that's where our backside is right now. We haven't, like I said, made a shirt or a jacket or anything, but we're on our way. I'm also gonna bring that. See this a little? That's not right. We need to maybe make a little. No matter what it is shirt or jacket I'm going to take some of that meat out of the inside just going to remove a little bit of that well that's rough but Let's get work on these feet. Uh oh, I thought I was recording, but I guess I wasn't. All I did was I'm bringing these feet down because they're way, way too thick. I'm trying to gain a little bit more pant material. Like so. Take the sides off. These are awful big feet. So, I'm going to take that center mark, I'm going to get it up into the, the pants here a little bit, okay? But, first things first, I'm going to take this, I'm going to come down on 45 that way, 45 that way, alright? I'm going a little bit deeper than the, the plant, pant material, I'm just kind of going down. Now I'm going to come down that line, same on both sides, and hopefully we'll be close to getting that whole section right out of there. I say hopefully. Where are you? Well, let's just take one section at a time then. All right, there we go. A little, little hole started in there. I can clean that up. A couple of cuts. And that's good enough. All right. So now we've got a little, little spot there in the front. Start of the pants. I'm gonna take the. Uh, Open these shoes up a little bit. All right. Take the corners off them. Now I want a real clean top of the shoe because what we're going to do is we're going to have those pants overlapping the shoe. I'm going to see what I mean in a second.
So, to give the, uh, normally your pants are going to come down here, but I'm going to start the pants out of here, like that, and now they're kind of laying on, on the shoe. Can you see that line? So, so I'm just going to cut across the top of the shoe and come into it. Right down the side, across the top, just like that. See it? So now the shoes or the pants are kind of on the shoe, and then we'll just take our our knife and we'll make some big wrinkle cuts in here. Just to show that they're sagging on there, right? So, same on this side. I'm looking at that something's a little a little wonky here I need more uniformity on my shoes both shoes really so I say just keep looking keep looking at your work Excuse me. I say just keep looking at your work and cleaning off any little rough areas and what have you. There. Oh, I need a couple, a couple of wrinkles over here. Around the back, put a couple in the back. Take that sharp edge off the corner of the shoes and the pants. If it's too sharp and you drop it or move it or scrape it, then that's the first place it's gonna peel off paint. Looks like your shoes look the same. I'm going to kind of come back in a little bit with that. Alright. Let's, uh, while we're here, make a little tiny V-cut all the way around the shoe. Real quick like a money. Just to give it a, a sole. A sole of a shoe. I'm not pressing too hard. I'm just kind of leaving a little little slide with my knife. All right. Across the front. That's all it is. Just like that. Now we've got soles on our shoes. And if we want to do something here, see how he's flat. If we want to just take a little hair off the front of the sole, like that. 
I see now there's a bit of a, a bit of a shadow underneath that and uh, shadows are your friend all right what do you want to do now we got to figure out what kind of shirt we're gonna or coat or whatever we're gonna do with that I say This is the top of our pockets right here. So whatever we do, we're gonna come down between those. So let's do that. Let's do like a, let's do a knit sweater. And we'll give a big knit rim. Rim, what do you wanna call it? It's not a rim. It's not a collar. What would you call all the, doesn't matter. <laughs> but and then the back side we'll do the same thing we never want to come straight across with our clothing we'll do a nice saggy saggy cut so let's start with the the back side wearing a heavy heavy wool sweater is what we're wearing I like that and now again with that cut so I got that sweater I'm gonna go just do a real a deeper cut and just get that little shadow under there see the little sliver I'm taking out it's just a whisper but now it's got a little dark line underneath there it gives you that shadow and a good paint line And then this sweater, we'll just kind of roll our knife. A little bit of. Give it some texture. I've never seen a wool sweater with sharp, sharp corners on it. All right. as we go but I think it's coming along okay okay now we want to do the uh, bottom of this wool sweater and that's uh, above the pockets and the same idea as the back we're just going to come around and I want the pants under the sweater we don't tuck in our sweater. That's your uh, the bottom of the sweater. I can just I want to cut in the uh, 
little rim here. My goodness, Doug. Learn how to talk. What is it? It's not a color. It's more decorative. Well, whatever it is, we're going to cut it in. And then just going to go up to that cut. Pop it. Okay, so I definitely am going to be making little little grooves in that, but not until I have all this other head work done, because I'm just going to end up ruining it and having to recut it. So we're going to have to move up. We're going to have to move up to the head and get that head all cut the way we want it before we do the, the decoration to the whatever you call it in the sweater. All right. That is where we are right now. Still got my center line right on the uh, on the front here, so I'm gonna round that whole face. Not really round, but angle that face just like that up under the hat before I dig in that hat more. I'm gonna give the contour of the face here. All right. Try and get the same on both sides here. sides all right see that okay I'm gonna undercut this hat give it that little curved shape way back in there underneath there Right under the the brim of the hat set that back where we're gonna want it okay there we got that way in there see that let's get that Round it over in the front. And now we can go a little bit thinner. Since we're not going to be cutting into it as much. Okay. And let's bring that back. It's a very uh, shallow top hat. It is what it is, eh? Now let's run that deep line in there as well. Okay, now we'll get rid of some of this.
Now, remember our little lines we left for our ears? So that's all we got left, but at least we still know where they are. So I'm going to uh, put a cut down there and across the bottom and straight up again. It's a little bit shallower. Okay. We're just going to box out an ear on each side. Just a little small little ear. See that? Just leaving a little box of an ear. Now, I've got them looking somewhat similar for the depth. That one's a little bit uh, taller, so I'll shorten it. Okay. I'm always uh, narrowing the top of the head. Can you see, if you look straight on, how that face comes up narrower? But that's what we're doing. So, for the ear, I'm just going to take the bottom corner off. I'm going to take a, a higher corner off the back. And a little corner off the top. And then I'm going to take my knife and I go on an angle. So I slice that ear on an angle back to the face. Do the same thing on this side. A little smaller corner on the front off, a higher corner on the back side. Okay. And then I'm going to slice. I'm going to keep the height on the back and I'm going to slice down to the front like that. And then I'm just going to take my knife and I'm going to make a big V cut. Now this is not an artistic ear, but an ear it is. See that? Of course there's a lot more to an ear than just a little chip out of it. But that's how we're going to do our ear on this guy. Very simple. We're going to keep away from the gouges and the veiners and all the other tools and just keep on it with our knife. And now you can see we've got an ear on both sides of our bella here. All right. set in the bottom of our nose. Alright. Okay. Before we go too far, let's put some sideburns. Big sideburns on this fella. And that's going to narrow up our head some more. So I'm going to come down with the sideburns back into the ear. Stick that in there.
trying to hang on to that. Wow. Let go. There you go. So there is our sideburns. Right here on one side. The exact same thing on this side. side sideburns and ears all right now we can bring this down under the ear across just taking some of that meat out of there we've got far too much meat back there and now what I'm gonna do right here I'm gonna come from the corner of that ear and I'm gonna come across like that and then I'm gonna come back for the hair see that that line there, the same thing here, back of the ear, and then forward with the jawbone. So I'm going to stick my knife in there, big angle, big angle. I'm just going to pop that big chunk out of there. Look at that. That's a chunk of, that's a chunk of wood. See that? I can come up under the ear, stick out of there, round that a bit there. And basically this is the uh, how we separate the hair and the jaw. Okay, I'll do it again on this side. I'm gonna come down. Let's see if I can get you closer. We've got our line here. I'm just going to stick my knife in, stick them down, and I'm going to come along with this one. I'm just going to try and pop out that big chunk. And that is A little bit out of here. There we go. See how we separated that? All right, we're getting there. All right, back to the uh, the front of this guy. I am. Uh, I'm not going to put a beard on him. But what do you think about a mustache? Little angle cuts on each side of the nose. Let's think about that while we do the eyes. I'm going to set the, uh, the eyes in here. That's going to go fairly deep. A little bit different working under a, under a hat like this, but I think we can make it happen. Same idea as the nose, I'm just kind of doing a long angles for now. Trying to get my knife blade up underneath there. There. Now if you can see I know you can't, so I'm going to show you. But I've got that center line on a point. Okay. How do I get more light here? I lost that. 
I've got the center line of the eye on a point, but this isn't straight down either. This is on an angle this way. There's a back towards the ear, but it's also tilted this way. Right? So it's like a compound angle here for the eyes. each way all right now I'm gonna take that nose and I'm gonna bring it down but I'm going to uh, only bring it as deep as what I cut here not to the uh, to the eyes so the eyes basically keep that little shelf that we made for them I'm going to round that off a bit. Give it a little bit, give it a little more angle on the bottom. But fairly square nose. That's fine. That's where we are. i to draw the eyeballs on here. Like I like to. Just gonna stick with our our regular old cartoon eyes that uh, that I love carving. Like so. That hat is giving me a shadow, isn't it? Anyway, but in the meantime, I think I have to. I think we have to make a mustache. I'm going to make Mr. Mustache here. I fought the urge to make the beard, but I don't think we're going to get away with the mustache. <sighs> Give him a big, goofy mustache. Yeah, we are. All right. So for this, let's let's just dig that out right now. All right. Oh, you're way up there. What are you doing up there? Come down here. All right. So like I said earlier, I just want you to have the confidence to just attack a piece of wood and make whatever it is that you want to make. And yeah, if all my people have uh, beards and mustaches, that's because that's what I like to make. <laughs> so you can make whatever you like. All right. I don't know what kind of guy this is. Who has a mustache like this anymore anyway? Anybody? Is that still a thing? Okay, I'm just gonna bring that around. Bring this side, bring it around. This is gonna give us some nice Nice cheekbones. Look at that mustache. Too much chin now. I 
this dash is set. All right, so I'm just gonna deepen those lines and really get that mustache to pop right over there. All right. Get a little chip out of the nose where the mustache meets the nose. Pop a little shadow cut. side <laughs> all right I got undercut the bottom. Make him all mustache. Mr. Mustache. Is this new name? Okay. Take those sharp edges off. Look at that mustache. Why are you not clear? Look at that mustache. <laughs> okay, we're gonna give him a, a little bit of a lip. I think, anyway. Just a little representation of the bottom lip. Right. Okay, we'll get that chin around at the bottom. Just looking at this guy, you know that beard's gray. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, you still with me? You guys wanted a longer video. I'm sure this is going to be the one. Okay, so let's jump over and uh, get these eyes cut in. All I'm doing here is sticking the tip of my knife in and following my line, and I sweep it out at the bottom. Stick the knife in, follow the line around, and a little kick at the bottom. I put a little line, a little cut there. We can pop that chip out of the corner. Same on both sides. Take the chip out. And really, I'm just uh, going to cut up to underneath that line. And take out all the wood on an angle. Alright. And then give that 
inside the player. Around that eyeball in place. Cut off my pencil lines. Give them a little wrinkle lines past the eye on both sides. Actually, maybe two. Alright, there is our man with the eyeball. That brim of the cap is shading his eyes, but his eyes are there. Maybe a little fine tuning, rounding them a bit, but they are there. So, let's jump down and uh, talk about this sweater again. I think, like I said before, I'm just going to put some little some V cuts in this sweater. But I think before I even do that, let's. These arms, they feel a little bit long to me. I think by putting the same, same uh, cuff going this way, I think that'll take some of that length look out of there. All right. So let's do that. Just give a little, a little cuff on this sweater. Just some little V cuts. Give a little bit more texture and take away that uh, lanky feeling on that sweater. There, and if we match that on here, all the way around, I think we've got something. Are you bored? I think you're bored. I would be bored if I was watching this. Let's just say, I'm going to finish this around the collar. And uh, I'll bring it back. I don't think I'm going to make any hair. I think we're going to keep the hair as is. Just maybe sharpen up some of these edges. But I think we'll keep the hair as a solid without any, you know, making any little V cuts or anything in the hair. I'll just keep it all, even the mustache too. Why not? You don't always have to go crazy with the, with the hair.
Okay, I'm gonna finish up all my little grooves, and I think uh, I think he's ready to paint. We're gonna paint this guy. All right, time for a paint job. All right, we've got our little man all finished up here. He's got his little salt and pepper mustache and hair, heavy sweater, blue jeans. Kind of a, not really a ball cap, kind of like an army cap. But like I said in the beginning, you don't have to make him. I want you to make him your own. And a couple other examples I pulled off the shelf here is a fellow like this. These are all four inches tall, by the way. So this guy here, see he's got blonde hair, a little part for his hair. He got one arm straight, one arm in his pocket. See? Same ideas, just keeping one arm out and without the hat, just give him a little part of hair. Right? This fella here, this is Jim. He's wearing coveralls. His legs are spread a little more than the other guy, but uh, Jim's a mechanic, as you can get his name tag on there, but he's got the cap on. This guy here is wearing a flat cap. And he's got a hike, hiking stick in his hand. And all that was is one hand out, bent, and drill a hole and stick a stick in it. All right? So there's not much value in me creating four videos for four different kinds of guys. My goal is that you'll just take it on yourself with the little cuts and the, you know, differentiating the limbs and the jacket, coat, hats, hair, what have you, but uh, there's four little four inch fellas that uh, I'm sure you can attack and go at them and uh, make them your own. So until the next time, I will catch you later. Thanks for watching everybody.